Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome everyone to God in the Midst, Get Up Radio. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, O Lord. We lift you up and we give you praise. You're so worthy of the praise, the Heavenly Father. We lift you up and magnify your name. You're so worthy of the praise, the Heavenly Father. We lift you up this day and give you all of the praise, Lord, because you're worthy. You're worthy to be praised, the Heavenly Father. You woke us up this morning. You clothed us in our right minds, and you gave us a reasonable portion of health and strength. And we have to magnify you and glorify your holy name. Dear Lord, we come right now just lifting you up, dear Lord, because you're an awesome God and a mighty God. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now and says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lord, just have your way with us because thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory forever and ever. Now, Lord, bless now this broadcast. Touch the internet. Touch the Heavenly Father. The telephone lines. We plead the blood over this technology right now in the name of Jesus. And then, Lord, we plead your blood over everyone that is listening now and that will listen in the future. Lord, we know that there's power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Now, Lord, we just ask you to let a word go forth this day that will encourage us, that will strengthen us, and that will lead us and guide us and grow us in your kingdom. It's in your, your name, Lord Jesus, the mighty name that's above every name, the name that every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that he is Lord, because he's Lord of lords and King of kings. We lift you up, God, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Welcome again, everyone, to God in the Midst, Get em Radio. G-I-T-N Radio, God in the Midst. This is our Sunday School lesson for June 10th, June 10th, 9th, no, 2018. Boy, I'd be wanting to go back a century. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now uh, our scripture reading for today comes from Matthew, Matthew the twenty. Now, Matthew, the 13th chapter, and we're going to be looking at verses 24 through 33. Uh, it is a familiar passage of scripture, so I feel free and, and comfortable today reading it straight from the Message Bible. Follow me, if you will. Matthew chapter 13, starting with verse 24. He told another story. That means Jesus told another story. God, God's kingdom is like a farmer who plants good seed in his field. That night, while his hired men were asleep, his enemy sowed tares all through the wheat and slipped away before dawn. When the, the first green sprouts appeared, the shoots appeared, and the grain began to form, the tares showed up too. The, the farm hands came to the farm and said, the farm hands came to the farmer and said, Master, that was, was good seed you planted, clean seed you planted, wasn't it? Where did these tares come from? He said, some enemy did this. The farm hand asked, should we weed out the tares? 
The farmer said, no, if you weed the tares, you'll pull up the wheat too. Let them grow together until harvest time. Then I'll instruct the harvester to pull up the tares and tie them in bundles for the fire. Then gather the wheat and put it in the barn. Another story. God's kingdom is like a pine nut that a farmer plants. It is uh, uh, quite small as seeds go. But in the course of a year, it grows into a huge pine tree and eagles, eagle birds nest in it. Now, King James Version says he planted a mustard seed, a small mustard seed, and then the mustard seed grew into a big tree. All right, verse 33, another story. God's kingdom is like yeast that a woman works into the dough of dozens of loaves of barley bread and waits while the dough rises. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Today, today we're going to talk about the kingdom growth. The kingdom grows. Yes, the kingdom grows. God's kingdom, his kingdom is constantly growing. God's kingdom is constantly growing. And so as we look at this lesson today, uh, uh, let's start off with our introduction. I don't know about you, but but there are different kinds of riddles that, that exist in this world. Most of us enjoy a challenge of a good riddle. The best riddle challenge our minds to, to solve a problem of language and logic. They can, they can prove hard to solve, but also hard to forget. We, we may puzzle over them for days trying to solve them. And, and when we discover or learn the answer, the best riddles surprise us. We realize that they have exposed our assumptions and our, and our normal ways of thinking. Uh, the, these riddles challenge us to consider how often we may miss the truth because we assume something is not true. Jesus know, Jesus is known, if you will, for having taught in parables, a form of speech, much like a riddle. Although his parables, although his parables use commonly understood images and everyday uh, uh, events, they force the listener to rethink their understanding of how God was working in the world. The parables combine familiar details with a demand for serious reflection. Today's text is a section from a much longer discussion that consists mostly of parables. The lesson Jesus taught in these parables challenged widely held conceptions or misconceptions of how God was going to bring his kingdom about. And so in this, in this, this, this lesson, this lesson, as we look at it today, we're going to look at the key concepts of the enemy, Satan, who is trying to get people to follow him, and we have to make sure that we stay on God's side. The keys to this message is Satan will try to get you to unfollow God by making you believe that it's better to live without God. Also a key, the keys to this message is God's way. The Bible is always the best way no matter what. And so as we study this lesson today, we're going to have some aims that we're shooting for. The learning facts that we want to deal with is to identify the central idea of God's kingdom in the lesson of these three parables. Also, our biblical principle that we want to grab onto is to grow spiritually daily as we anticipate God, 
God's kingdom to come. And then finally, our daily application that we want to look at is to be visibly different to the world around us. Uh-oh. No, you can't be part of the crowd. You got to be visibly different. And so, as we look at this lesson, we're going to look at kingdom sowing, and that's the parable of the tares. And then we're going to look at kingdom harvest. That's the parable of the mustard seed. And then we're going to look at kingdom growth, and that's the parable of the leaven. Hallelujah. Now, as a background for this lesson, as I said earlier, there's a lot of discussion going on. This, 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 this lesson, oh man, this, this is a part of the text that goes all the way back to the beginning of this chapter. And, and, and Jesus starts talking about, about sowing uh, uh, the parable of the sower, the parable of the sower, if you will talking about the sower sowing uh, seeds. And he sowed some on weedy ground. He sowed some on hard pathway ground. He sowed some on rock, rocky soil. And then he sowed some on good soil. And then when he sowed these good seeds in all four of those different places, uh, th what ended up happening was is that the, the, weed, I mean, the, the weeds grew Oh, hallelujah. I got something going on with my computer. Just talk to me back, talk back to me. I didn't put the length of time on my blog talk. So I'm going to be going into overtime. Hopefully it won't uh, disturb anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, let me take a take a just a, a minor break here and break in. Uh, Pastor Mom, are you there? Okay, you hearing everything I'm saying? All right. Thank you. Hey, hey, Joy. I'm talking to my mom and Joy on the conference call, just making sure that it's coming through. Uh, Joy, if it doesn't, Joy, if it stops for any reason, please uh, send me a message on Facebook, and I'll see it on the live broadcast. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all going back on mute. Hallelujah. I'm sorry I had to do that, everybody, but I, I have to take care of this technology. Hallelujah. And so here it is now. Here it is now. We're going to look at this kingdom sowing, kingdom sowing. And we're going to look at verses 24 to 34. 24 to 34 in chapter uh, 13. Listen to it again now, this time from the New International Version. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seeds in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed seeds among the wheat and went away. And when the wheat sprouted up and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then the owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, sir, didn't you sow good seeds in the field? When then, when then did the weeds come from? Where then did the weeds come from? And the enemy, and he said, and he said, and the enemy did this. The servant asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling up the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time, I will tell the harvester, first collect the weeds and tie them into a bundle and then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so here it is, this, 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 this is kingdom sowing. Jesus gives the interpretation of this parable later on in the verse. He says, the son of man is the former, the former who, who, who comes to sow God's seed in the field. The people uh, 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 of the kingdom of God, which produces a good harvest on its own. The kingdom of God does not start out 
ready-made. It grows, if you will, like a seed through the growth, uh, through the growth of the people of God. And as uh, we grow in God, the kingdom of God grows in us. But the enemy, you know, he around somewhere because he goes around seeking who he may devour. He, he, the enemy, he tries to steal. He tries to kill. He's around y'all. You got to recognize that he's around. You got to know his schemes and his methods of operation. But the enemy who is Satan, the, the, the enemy of our soul also sold bad seeds. Everybody say he sold bad seeds. If the, if the devil gives you anything, it's going to be bad. If he sows anything into your heart and into your mind, it's going to be bad. All the, all the devil ever do is see confusion, see uh, a contradiction. He sees conflict. That's what the enemy does. He sees all kind of crazy stuff. Both those who live for the kingdom of God and those who live for the kingdom of darkness exist together in this world. They grow together in the world. Both justice and injustice exist side by side. Both good and evil can be found in the same field. It is so obvious to most people that both good and evil exist in our society. Here, Jesus reaffirms that reality. The reality that the enemy is real and tries to plant evil in the midst of God's good garden. It is important to remember that while we see more evil in the world, there is also more good. And God is allowing both to grow together. Yeah, yeah. He wants both to grow together. So, so you got to understand that Jesus, he is the one sowing the good seeds. And the field is the world. And the good seeds that Jesus is sowing is his word, and he, he's sowing that into the children of God. But the devil, he's sowing tares, and, and, and he's sowing tares into the demons and the nymphs and, and the, the children of darkness. Satan most definitely is the enemy, the God. Jesus says, when harvest time come, oh, it's harvest time, y'all. When harvest time come, oh, you know I like saying it's harvest time. It's harvest time. When harvest time comes, that's the time when Jesus is coming back to get us all who are his. And it says that the harvester, that's the reaper. He's coming. And that's the angels of the Lord. And they're coming. And when they come, he says, look at here. I want you to gather up the tares first and bundle them for the fire. And then I want you to gather up the wheat. That's the, that's the children of God. The tares are the children of darkness, and, 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 and the wheat are the children of light, the children of God. And he's the, and the reaper is going to gather them all up. Oh, man, when Jesus told this story, he, 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 he said, look, 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 you got to understand. He told the hirelings, let them grow up together. Let's bring this into our day. Don't be cherry picking the members of your church. Don't be only going after folks you think will do good in your church. You got to let the good and the bad come into your church. You got to minister to the darkness and to the light. Don't just be somebody to go around always ministering to people that are children of the light. 
you got to minister to the people who are in darkness that they might turn around and see the light. And here's the trip. They're going to be reading you and they're going to be reading me. That may be the only light they ever see. We have to show our lives as good seeds into their dark world and watch Jesus turn them around. And so in the church, in the body of believers, when we assemble ourselves together, children of the light, children of the kingdom of God, children of God, when we assemble ourselves together, there are always going to be some wheat, I mean, some, some tares in the mix. There are always going to be some, some devils there. There are going to be some sheep, I mean, some wolves in sheep clothing. They're going to be there. They, they can't help themselves. Every time uh, they hear a good song, praising God, they say it's time for us to go to work so that we can stop all that praise. Every time uh, they hear somebody preach a good word, they say, oh, no, we got to stop that. He preaching too good. She preaching too good. That's where they show up. They showing up to fight. They showing up to try to defeat us. They showing up to sow weeds. Oh, have mercy. But Jesus says, let them grow up together. So love everybody. Pray for everybody. Even your enemies. Even your wolves dressed in sheep clothing. Because it's not our responsibility as wheat to judge the tares. We can't judge the wheat nor the tares because we don't have a place to put them in. That's God's business. He's handling that. And we have to be honest with ourselves when we know when he picked us up and he turned us around and he placed our feet on solid ground. We got to realize that, 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 that we was once in darkness and he led us to the light. We got to realize that, that we got skeletons still in our closet that he has forgiven us for. And if he can change us, he can change anybody else. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So this is kingdom sown. We got to sow like Jesus sowed. We are his children. We are his, his people. And we got to tell the world what a mighty God we serve. He can pick you up. He can turn you around. And he can place your feet on solid ground. We got to tell the world about Jesus. That, that even if he have to reach way down, he'll reach way down to pick us up. Oh, we got many, many descriptions of how Jesus has have, have picked people up in the Bible. He picked up old Joseph after his brothers put him into the pit. He picked up Joseph after Potiphar put him in the prison. He picked up Joseph out of that prison and put him into the palace. Oh, somebody ought to know what I'm talking about. Because I can hear him at the end when he got ready to bless his brothers and his father. He said, uh, you meant it for evil, but God, God meant it for good that others might be saved. So, so don't be getting mad when folks when the enemy souls tear and weeds in your area because God knows what to do with them. Your job is to just let them grow up and love on them. That's kingdom sowing. Now let's get to the kingdom harvest. Verse 31 and 32. This is the parable of the mustard seed. Listen from the New International Version. He told them another parable. 
The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest seed, which a man took and planted in his field, though it's the smallest seed of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds can come and perch in its branches. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, hallelujah. Says, Jesus says, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Again, the kingdom of God does not start off fully manifested. The kingdom is not like a castle that drops onto the earth. It is not an army that overtakes the world. It is not impressive to look at, in fact. It looks like it's not much at all to those who don't appreciate humble and small beginnings. But the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, the smallest of the seeds. The kingdom of heaven grows. God's kingdom is always expanding. Oh, somebody ought to holler. Enlarge my territory, Lord. It is always growing as more and more people are added to the kingdom through salvation in Jesus Christ. And as it grows, it becomes more and more impressive. We must appreciate and care for the seeds of the kingdom, the seeds of justice and righteousness in order to receive the full manifestation. But the kingdom of God does not impact the plant itself. The kingdom of God positively produces good all around. The plant becomes a shelter for those birds nearby. When we, as the church, invest our little mustard seed faith in God and work together in faith with God, that which was planted, that which was sown, will grow and grow and grow. Oh, yes, it might start off small. Pastor Paul, it just might be two or three. Pastor Mom, it might just be four or five. But if you keep on growing, as an individual in God's word, then that will show. And then you will see the church grow and grow and grow. See, when Jesus was saying this parable, they had a misconception that he was getting ready to bring his kingdom to earth right then and there. They were thinking, that, that Jesus was going to come and defeat the Roman Empire and just take over the world. But that ain't how Jesus operates. Jesus blesses us one by one. He reaches one, and that one reaches one, and that one reaches one. And that's how the kingdom grows. 
That's how the kingdom of God grows. One at a time. Oh, hallelujah. And he does this growth. He does this growth so that he can receive a harvest. He wants to receive a gigantic harvest. You got to hear this parable. Listen to it again. He says, though it's the smallest seed of all, when it grows, it's the largest. He's getting the harvest out of this. He's seeing this magnificent growth. And then finally, after telling the parable of the mustard seed, he tells another parable in verse 33. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into 60 pounds of flour until all through, till it worked all through the dough. Oh, yes. This is that leaven, the parable of the leaven. And what Jesus is saying is, is that we are like the leaven. And he is the woman. And the world is the dough. And if he puts the leaven into the dough and work it and work it and work it, because God is doing this work, that it will affect the whole dough. And that whole dough will rise. Because that's what leaven does. Leaven makes the dough rise. He's saying that you and I are the leaven in this world. And we are going to touch everybody in this world one way or another. And he is working it. That our leaven can spread out to everything. Oh, we know the opposite is true. One one bad apple can spoil the whole bunch. But just as that is may be true in the world, in the kingdom of God, one good child of God can turn a bad batch into a good batch. Oh, hallelujah. Well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. This is a powerful, powerful lesson for us to to grab a hold of. And so as we get ready to end this lesson, I want to ask this question. What kind of Christian do you want to be? Do we want to be? Well, one who waits around for the kingdom to come or two, one who's available when others need them, or three, one who goes out of their way to make an impact on those around them. I don't know about you. I want to be all three. I, I want I want to want I want to be on tiptoe anticipation all the time that the kingdom of God is coming. I want to be able to say at all times, like John said at the end of Revelation, come Lord Jesus, come. I'm waiting on you coming back. I know that you bled on the cross for my sins, that you hung, bled, and died for my sins, and that you have forgiven me of my sins and cleansed me of all unrighteousness, and you have saved my soul from a burning hell. I know you done did that, Lord, so I'm ready to get out of this world, because this world is not my home and be with you up in heaven. But not only am I waiting for you to come, I'm also one who wants to be available when others need them. I want to be that tree that started off as a little mustard seed that becomes a big tree that the birds of all the nations of the world can come and rest on. And those that are down on the ground can receive shade and peace. 
Oh, yes. I want to be available. Are you available? And finally, I want to be the one who goes out of their way to make an impact on all of those around. I want to be that leaven bread, that leaven in that bread that influences my society because he that is in us is greater than he that is in this world. So no weapon formed against us will prosper. Every tongue that rises up against us will be put to shame. Oh, we got to be able to say, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out. Uh, you can do what you want to do to me, but God is with me. You might mean it for evil, but God means it for good, that it might help others. What kind of Christian are you? Are you really wheat? And you waiting for harvest? Are you a mustard seed that is growing that will help others? Are you somebody making an impact on the kingdom of God? Oh, hallelujah. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. The promise of God's kingdom is that God will certainly bring relief and vindication. Our holy God and just God cannot abide with evil and injustice forever. His kingdom promises to defeat the devil and his works. Create a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells nothing but righteousness. In the meantime, let us work diligently to share and shine our light onto the people we come in contact every day by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for ruling over every part of this world. Empower us daily to live as lights to others until your kingdom comes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thought to remember, what am I doing to impact my surroundings? Oh, hallelujah. Before we close Facebook and go into overtime, on the conference call, um, those who are listening with us, we want to offer you to come on to the overtime period. That number is 619-639-4733. And you come on to the conference call and we could have prayer. We can discuss the lesson. You can ask questions. Uh, but at this time, we want to pray the prayer of salvation with those that are listening now and those that's going to listen to this recording there later. You pray this prayer with us. I believe you will be saved. Please repeat after me. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and that he was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me live the life in the light of your glory. Now, Lord, we thank you for saving our souls. We thank you, Lord, for making us whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Facebook. Please join us on the overtime period, 619-639-4733. You have a blessed day, and always remember to be a blessing. Hallelujah.